Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dokonic here, and welcome back for another Top 5 Tuesday. And today we're going to be going over the Top 5 Best Technique Cards You Can Run as Support on a Tech Team. Alright, so let's go ahead and start out by going over the rules. Uh, first one is going to be that this is a global only. Um, currently it is June 18th. So I will only be going over the cards that are currently available on the global side as of June 18th, 2017. This is going to be restricted to non-Dokan exclusive cards. So any card that is a Dokan Fest exclusive will not be taken into consideration. Any other technique card that is available in game will be taken into consideration. So that includes world tournaments, so anything that was gifted to us by Bandai for special events, anything purchased in the Bomba Shop, or anything that is summonable outside of the Dokan exclusives. Um, only passive skills will be taken into consideration, or they will be primary, unless the cards are tied in for a specific place. Then link skills will be taken into consideration. After that, the amount of damage they do in terms of their damage multiplier, extreme, supreme, immense, catastrophic, etc. And the last assumption is going to be that they are always going to be on third rotational slot. That you do not have a need to keep them on a permanent rotation. And they're just going to be on the last slot so that way they're buffing the rest of the team. So before we go ahead and start going over the cards, once again, let me just pre-state, I am not going to be going over the order of the cards in which I rank them at first. The ranking will come after me going over the card group. So, let's go ahead and start. The first card we're going to talk about is Fury Unleashed Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Youth. This is a tech card with a passive skill of Raging Fury and an unbridled key plus 2 for any agility and technique types. The next one is going to be Sinister Scientist Toa. Uh, her passive skill is an unbridled key plus 2 for all allies. Again, really good. I didn't realize how many good support units tech actually has. The next one is Experienced and Growth Super Saiyan Trunks from GT. His passive skill, Sudden Flash, an unbridled key plus two for technique and strength types. The next one is Whirlwind Strike Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Uh, now this is a Dokken Waken version of him. His passive skill is Supreme Potential, tech and strength type key plus three. He Dokken Awakens from Unlimited Power Super Saiyan 2 Goku. His passive skill is still really viable. His passive skill is Full Power, tech and strength key plus two. He Dokken Awakens with 7 medals from the Hero Extermination Event, level 9, a legendary fight. And last but not least, the last one is going to be the true value of the Pataro Vegeta. His passive skill is Pataro of Hope, attack and defense plus 30% for all allies. He does Dokken Awaken, he Dokken Awakens from the Miracle of Pataro Vegito. His passive skill is also pretty viable. The ultimate fusion attack was 25% for all allies. He token awakens with 35 medals from the Supreme Fusion Blazing Pataro, the Super Vegito event. All right, guys, let's go ahead and just go over the honorable mentions before we move on to the rankings. First one is going to be martial artist pride Jackie Chun. His passive skill, hope for the new age, technique type attack and defense plus 25%. He token awakens from the seasoned sensei Jackie Chun. His passive skill, Hone Technique, Tech Type, Attack plus 10%, so it's really not that viable as Dokken Awakened for him really is. He Dokken Awakens from 7 medals from the Strike Event Master of Masters, which is the Jackie Chun Tech Strike Event. Um, the next one is going to be Total Might, Full Power, Super Saiyan Goku. His passive skill, Super Warriors Rage, All Allies Attack and Defense plus 25% when HP is 30% or above. He Dokken Awakens from Deadly Awakening, Super Saiyan Goku. His passive skill is... Awakening of a Super Warrior attack plus 15% for all allies when HP is 50% or above. That is kind of utterly trash, but it is viable. He's available on the guaranteed SSR summons, but he was also a World Tournament prize in the 8th World Tournament on the global side. Um, the next one is going to be World Domination Demon King Piccolo. His passive skill, Terrifying Measures, Extreme Type Key plus 3 and Attack plus 25%. He Dokken Awakens from Full Power Desper Desperation Demon King Piccolo, whose passive skill is... Um, full flowering power technique and intelligence type key plus two now let me state before i go on world domination demon king piccolo that passive skill of extreme type key plus three and attack plus 25 percent if you are running an extreme team in almost all if not all of your cards on your tech team are extreme and you have him token awakened you should always have him on the field you should always be part of your team because he would be the number one choice in my opinion because he gives all extreme cards up key and attack buff. It's it's just a no-brainer there. He's actually, because it's not tech specific, it's all extreme, so he also runs really well on an extreme team. But for this, for the sake of a tech team, he is really, really good. You want to make sure he's on your extreme teams, especially your extreme tech teams. 
Um, again, because it's only extreme types and not super types, he doesn't get the uh, the, uh, the top five spot. But he would if I was going over extreme tech type team. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, by the way, before I go on, uh, really quick, the two cards, the Piccolo, the King Piccolo that I just mentioned, and the Goku, the Undoken versions of them, Deadly Awakening, Super Saiyan Goku, and Full Power Desperation Demon King Piccolo, both require Master Mark medals. You attain those in the World Tournament in the local rankings in order for you to Doken Awaken them. You need to rank in the local rankings. You'll, when you go into the World Tournament, you'll actually see it. I don't have anything to show you as of right now, um, but you can get the Master Mark medals from that. All right, guys, now as for the rankings. So in the last place, or should I say the last place, is the fourth and fifth. Now, they're kind of interchangeable depending on who you are running on your team. Um, but in terms of who I'm running, I prefer a heroes type of team, so I have more Super Saiyans. Um, so I'm going to be going with Sinister Scientist Toa as last place. Uh, she is good. She is someone who I would put above the next card who I'm going to talk about, which is Experience and Growth Super Saiyan Trunks GT. Now, both of them are essentially spitting images of each other. They both have the same leader skill, recover 500 HP per key of characters type of team. They both have extreme damage modifiers. Toa does have the greatly lowers defense on her super attack, so but the defense, the debuff doesn't really do too much. Toa gives key plus two for all allies, but we're talking about specific tech teams, so Trunks does the same exact thing, tech and strength type key plus two. Trunks has a 140% 12 key multiplier, Toa has 130%. So he might win there, but it really does come down to who are you running on your team? Because he does have Super Saiyan, the Vegeta family, and Saiyan Warrior Race. And she has Fear and Faith, um, and Master of Magic, and Demon Duel. Now I know those guys aren't as relevant, but Fear and Faith definitely is. I mean, you have that Fear and Faith link, which is a key plus two, which a lot of villains have. They do tie, in my opinion. I just put her below it based off of who I run, personally. Uh, so you could exchange those two. Um, in third place, I have True Value of the Patara Vegeta. He has the passive skill, Patara of Hope, Attack and Defense plus 30% for all allies. So while he's not giving a key buff, he is giving a nice attack and defense buff. Now the attack doesn't really come into play until you're running 120 leads in my opinion, um, but he is definitely very viable for that reason in itself. The passive on his super attack doesn't really take it into consideration because it but only boost the attack of all your allies when he's the first to attack. And we're assuming here he's going to be the last to attack. Just because we're worrying about his passive skill. But he has an unbridled attacking defense for all allies. That 30% does come in handy. And his super attack, the reason why he is above the other two in my opinion, is because his super attack does supreme damage to the enemy. He has Fuse Fighter, and chances are you're going to run a Fuse Fighter on your technique team. There's a good handful of them that you could run including the key orb manipulator trunks that's in there. The Super Saiyan 3 trunks, uh, I mean, the global side doesn't have the heroes banner, so I can't include them. Um, but there are a couple other cards that I'm not going to mention here. He also does have, um, other than Fuse Fire Link, the Fierce Battle Link, and Prepared for Battle. So he does hit off some good Link skills. In second place, we have Fury Unleashed Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Yu. He gives an unbridled key plus two for everyone, very similar to the experience and growth Super Saiyan Trunks from GT and the Sinister Scientist Toa. The thing is, he does uh, cause a supreme damage to the enemy, and he has all the Saiyan links. He has Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, and he also has Kamehameha, which is a little bit more relevant. Not as much, but he does supreme damage to the enemy, um, and his 12 key multiplier is 140%. So he does get the hand up on the two guys who have the key plus two, but they only have the extreme damage modifiers. And his link set is just really good for a majority of heroes team. So he's, he'll be hitting off really well. Um, last but not least, if you haven't figured it out, Whirlwind Strike Super Saiyan 2 Goku is my first place pick because his passive skill Supreme Potential, Tech and Strength Type Key plus 3. He also has some amazing link skills of Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan Kamehameha, Prepared for Battle. Now he does also have Shattering Limit. There's a couple of cars that do have that link skill set, that link skill set on a tech team. Um, but he also does immense damage to the enemy, so because he is kind of shafted in the amount of damage output he does, they gave him the immense damage modifier, uh, he's definitely worth it, he's a good card to have on your team, I would pick him as my number one, uh, if anything, I would say him and the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan would work really well together, because they're just essentially key plus two, key plus three, key plus two, key plus three, and they do some decent damage, and assuming you have both of them at Super Attack 10, ooh man, they'll be doing some damage for you. But that is my top five for the best technique support units you can run on a technique team. Do you guys think that I left anyone, any of them out? 
which ones do you prefer to run? Do you think my rankings are correct? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that sub button if you're new here, and stay tuned for next week's Top 5 Tuesday.